Welcome back. This is the episode two of Cash Welfare Programs, Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, TEMF. And this is Public Finance. Dr. Garrick is speaking. Let's get started. All right, so we are still at the utility maximization portion of the theoretical tools of public finance class. So, so one, we talked about the cash welfare programs, temp program. We learned how this program adjusts an individual's budget line. So if you haven't watched that video, it is super important that you watch it now, right now. And I will be posting the link somewhere here. You need to watch the previous part, which is part six. Okay, so... We learned about how to create temporary assistance to needy families. All right. Here now we are going to determine how large will be the labor supply response for these kind of programs. So what's the expected labor supply response to such a policy change? What was the policy change? Basically, temporary assistance to needy families program with $5,000 benefit guarantee, right? And with 50% benefit reduction rate, the new budget line becomes this kinked budget line. What happens if the benefit guarantee rate is reduced to $3,000? Okay, so this budget line shifts in like this. And this kink point also changes. All right, so let's get started. So it depends on where the single mother initially was on the budget line or budget constraint if she earned less than six thousand dollars per year the policy change involves only income effect not a substitution effect and we'll talk about that so this is the initial budget line right with the program so it's this portion i'm actually going to grab blue let's grab green all right so here is the new budget line with the temporary assistance to needy families the red budget line, solid straight line, is when we have no benefits, no programs, okay? So if the benefit guarantee goes down to 3000 a mother who works very little, right? This is very high leisure. This mother is working only a couple of hundred uh, hours a year. So the effective wage rate doesn't change for this person. This person just moves to a lower budget line that is parallel so it's a parallel shift this is pure income effect pure income effect says you are poorer so let me show you you were here right this was your leisure this was your leisure and this is your food consumption it's over here it's supposed to be straight line sorry okay so when you jump to this point it's a pure income effect you're poorer for sure so then you're going to consume less leisure, boom. And you're also going to consume less consumption goods. Also less food consumption. Of course, you're going to have to work more, okay? So if leisure is a normal good, the income effect would reduce the leisure increased work. So that's a nice little outcome, okay? If the mother initially earned between $6,000 to $10,000 a year, she's going to get hit by two effects. This policy change involves both income and substitution effects. So they will go in the same direction. So imagine this mother who is working, who is making between six dollars to $10,000. So this mother is actually making, let's say, working about, taking leisure about 1,300 hours. So working about 700 hours. So 700 hours, so making about $7,000 in the labor market, right? So what happens to this mom is that this mother is going to move to a different budget line. Remember, this was the budget line with negative 5 slope. This is the budget line with negative 10 slope. So steeper budget line. She's now going to be subject to the... New budget line. First of all, what's going to happen is that both income and substitution effects will tell her to consume less leisure. Okay, so change in labor supply involves both income and substitution effects together. And economic theory will clearly suggest that such a benefit reduction will cause increased hours of work. Okay, 
So labor supply will increase, hours will go up, but we don't know about the magnitude of the response, okay? So some welfare recipients who were not initially working can actually uh, continue not to work, all right? So imagine these people. This person was initially out of the labor force right at this point. I'm trying to find it. Right at this point. Well, this person can still stay out of the labor market. Okay, I'll just collect $3,000 and make two, okay? So she continues to stay out of labor market even with the benefits reduction. All right, I will see you in next part, part eight. Well, we talk about demand curve, price elasticity of demand. But before we move on, I want to show you something. What if a mother was right here, made more than $10,000? For this mother, there's no change, right? This mother won't be affected by any policy changes. It's like the CEO I mentioned you about making more than half a million dollars. I don't care if benefit level goes up or down. It doesn't affect me, all right? In next part, we'll talk about demand curve and price elasticity of demand. You have seen this topic in previous classes, potentially in microeconomics principles class. Also in labor economics class, we covered this. And I bet you also covered it in the intermediate microeconomics class. But I'll see you then. Bye.